Okay, so I think we're recording. Um, welcome back, guys. So we started off with the sheep gate, um, which is salvation, fish case evangelism, um, old gate discipleship, the valley gates testing, uh, the dung gate is you know sanctification, repentance, purification. The fountain gate is refreshing by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we get to the water gate. So it's a picture of God's word. Um, Ephesians 5, 2, 6, 26, it says, by the washing with water through the word of God. Um, Psalm 119, 9, only by God's word are we made clean. Um, so we're not talking about uh, like salvific, like get, you know, getting saved clean here. Um, we're talking about the daily, and it's kind of interesting, it's on the other side of the valley gate, right? So two sides of the same coin. Here you're being humbled and that kind of thing. But here, after being humbled and repented and being refreshed, every day you have to choose to read the word and have your mind renewed and be cleansed again, be cleansed again. Um, sometimes we have an outpouring of the spirit in our life that's fantastic, like at the fountain gate wonderful outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit. But we have to keep every day maintaining that, um, being in the word. Um, so Psalm 1, 1 to 3, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Sorry, I got hiccups somehow. I don't know. Um, my challenge for you, as far as homework on this section, is to memorize Psalm chapter, Psalm 1. It's not that long. It's really easy to memorize. And I think it's taking the next step as far as what that water and that cleansing is because you got to renew your mind. Um, you have to wash out a lot of the thought patterns and stuff like that and actively replace them with things that are glorifying to God. Psalm 119, 9 11. How can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. I do not do not let me stray from your command. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Um, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Um, do good to your servant, and I will live. I will obey your word. And that's, you know, this this part here is really interesting because there is a two-sided thing to it on the one hand there's this commitment to god i'll obey you on the other hand it's lord do good to your servant like help me <laughs> to obey you if you read psalm 119 and i won't give you that for homework necessarily because it's absolutely massive um but if you read just if you memorize psalm 1 and then you read the first couple um sections of psalm 19 it's an acrostic by the way it's really cool it's every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So Olive, Bet, Gimel, et cetera, et cetera. It'd be like saying A, B, C, D, and having a poem and a song for every letter. So it's very cool. Um, but you see this over and over and over and over again. I mean, the way the psalmist talks is like, Lord, I delight in your commandments. Help me to take heed to your promises. Help me not to neglect your word, you know. Um, uh, take away from me reproach and contempt, you know, and because, um, because I delight in your commandments, like, he's constantly like, you know, if you read Romans 7, uh, there's like this tension of, we really want to obey the Lord, but then there's like our flesh and things kind of getting to us. And then Romans 8 is like this joy, because Christ sets us free from that continual bondage. But there's still some, something to be said for the fact that, um, we set our heart completely to obey the Lord, and then we ask him to empower us to do that. It's not one or the other. Okay, so um, what we're going to do next is we do the water gate, and uh, we're going to do the, the horse gate. So water gate, let's leave off for there for now. Um, 
you know, talk amongst yourselves in the group. The group leader will ask you questions. Um, you know, how can you choose to have um, the word of God memorized really is what I want to get at. Because, I mean, you learned over here, you need to be reading it. And you learned over here how bad you need it and repentance. And you're and now you're getting filled with the spirit and all kinds of stuff's happening. It's great. What about memorizing? What about taking deliberate time to just set it aside in your heart and your mind? So, you know, and then we'll pick up on the horse gate right after that. Okay, welcome back, guys. Um, now we're going to do the horse gate. Sorry, I moved my thing right in the way. I want you to notice, too, um, is this comes right after this. This Watergate memorization of the word of God and getting it in your mind, your heart, is really important um, because you're going to need the word when it comes to spiritual warfare. Uh, remember we talked about how, you know, once you get saved and you're evangelizing and you're learning God's ways and you're going through testing and stuff like that, you're being humbled and you're repenting and you're being filled with the spirit, and you're memorizing God's word, you're having to fight the enemy, you know what I mean? Like the devil is not asleep. He's trying to win you back. He's trying to come against your mind and your heart and the word of God prepares you for battle. So this was used for an entrance to horse and stables near the temple. It was symbolic of warfare. Horses were used in battle and became a symbol of war. This is 2 Corinthians 10, 2 to 6. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. So... He's talking to Christians that are fighting and bickering with each other, right? So it's not like a Christian going to court because a corporation or an unbeliever ripped them off and they're trying to sort it out. No, he's talking here about people who are in the church ought to know better, but what they're doing is squabbling and bickering and fighting. And, and so he says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up um, against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. So he's saying, look, in the church, okay, with other believers, you ought to know the word so well that you guys within the church can handle disputes and divisions and dissensions. And you can overcome the enemy by not resorting to natural means to try and resolve issues, but to war in the spirit. Um, so that's the uh, the horse gate. And then, um, so yeah, we did the water gate and the horse gate. Next time, we're going to get into the east gate and inspection gate. Um, appreciate you guys' this time. I want to encourage you once again to um, do the homework this week, which for the Watergate was to memorize Psalm chapter one, Psalm one, and then for the Horse Gate, I want to encourage you to read Ephesians chapter six, um, which is about spiritual warfare and um, putting on the armor of God and how the Word of God is like a sword and, and everything. So I want you to do that, and then I'll see you back here for the East Gate and the Inspection Gate. Thanks, guys.